Hey everyone, welcome to ISRC. In today's video we will be building a maze solving robot capable of navigating through a maze and finding its way out. This robot will use sensors to detect obstacles and walls, along with a maze solving algorithm such as the left hand rule, right hand rule, or the flood fill algorithm to efficiently find the exit. By the end of this guide, you'll understand the core concepts of robotics, including sensor input, motor control, and pathfinding algorithms. Section 1. Components and Materials Required Microcontroller An Arduino, UNO, Nano, or similar microcontroller to act as the brain of the robot. Motors and Motor Driver Two DC motors with wheels for the robot's movement. An H-Bridge Motor Driver, L298N, L293D, etc., to control the motors. Sensors Ultrasonic sensors, HCSR04, or IR sensors for obstacle detection and wall following. Optionally, line following sensors for better precision. Chassis A small robot chassis to hold the microcontroller, motors, sensors, and other components. Power supply Batteries to power the robot, 6 volt or 9 volt, or a rechargeable power bank. Wires, breadboard, and jumper cables. For connecting the components to the microcontroller. Section 2. The working principle. How the robot solves the mace. The mace solving robot follows the walls or a line inside the mace. It uses sensors to detect walls and an algorithm helps it navigate the maze by taking turns based on the walls it encounters. We will implement the left-hand rule algorithm in this project. The robot will continuously follow the left wall, taking left turns whenever possible, moving straight when there's no left turn, and turning right only when left and straight paths are blocked. Section 3. Mechanical Setup Assembling the Chassis Attach the two DC motors to the chassis. Place the wheels on the motor shafts and ensure they spin freely. Attach any caster wheels or support wheels to the back of the chassis for balance. Mounting the sensors. Place the ultrasonic sensors on the front and sides of the chassis. Ensure that the front sensor faces forward to detect obstacles ahead while the side sensors are angled slightly outward to detect walls. Microcontroller and motor driver Attach the motor driver to the chassis and connect it to the motors. Mount the Arduino or microcontroller on the chassis, making sure it's securely fastened. Section 4. Electrical connections Motor connections Connect the DC motors to the motor driver. Connect the motor driver's input pins to the Arduino's digital pins, which will control the motor's direction and speed. Sensor connections. Connect the ultrasonic sensors to the appropriate pins on the Arduino. Each sensor requires a trigger and echo pin. Use VCC and GND pins to power the sensors. Power connections. Power the Arduino using a battery or a power bank. Connect the motors and sensors to the appropriate power lines. Section 5. Writing the code. Now that you have the code, let's explain how it works. The code is designed to control the robot's movement using ultrasonic sensors to detect walls and obstacles and motors to drive the robot. It uses a simple decision-making algorithm based on sensor inputs. Here's a breakdown of each part of the code. Libraries and pin setup. Library inclusion. We use the ultrasonic library to control and retrieve distance measurements from the ultrasonic sensors. These sensors help the robot detect walls and obstacles. Pin definitions. Pins for controlling the motors and reading sensor data are defined. We assign specific pins on the Arduino to the trigger and echo pins of the sensors and to control the motor's movement, forward and backward directions for left and right motors. Ultrasonic objects, 
Two ultrasonic sensor objects are created, one for detecting walls on the left and one for detecting obstacles in front. These will help guide the robot's movement. Initializing the robot. Motor pin configuration, we set the motor control pins as outputs. This allows the Arduino to send control signals to the motors to move them forward or backward. Serial communication, we initialize serial communication, serial.begin, 9600, for debugging purposes. This allows you to view sensor readings or other debugging information in the serial monitor while testing the robot. Main control loop. Sensor readings. The robot continuously measures the distance to obstacles using the ultrasonic sensors. Distance left captures the distance to the left wall and distance front captures the distance to obstacles in front. Decision-making logic. Obstacle ahead. Distance front smaller than 15 if the front sensor detects an obstacle less than 15 cm away, the robot turns right to avoid a collision. Wall on the left, distance left smaller than 10 if the left sensor detects a wall within 10 cm, the robot moves forward. No wall on the left, if there is no wall detected on the left, the robot turns left to follow the left hand rule. This loop ensures that the robot navigates the maze by adjusting its direction based on the environment. Motor control functions. Move forward. This function drives both motors forward by setting their forward control pins high and backward control pins low. Turn left. To turn left, the robot stops the left motor and runs the right motor, causing the robot to pivot left. The delay ensures that the robot completes its turn before checking sensor readings again. Turn right. Similarly, to turn right, the robot stops the right motor and runs the left motor, causing it to pivot right. The delay ensures a full turn. This setup allows the robot to navigate through the maze using basic sensor data and decision making. Also, we have provided a code in the description box. Section 6. Testing and Calibration Once your robot is built and the code is uploaded. Test movement. Check if the motors move the robot forward, backward, and turn correctly. Sensor calibration. Test if the sensors accurately detect walls and obstacles. Adjust sensor positions and sensitivity if necessary. Algorithm tuning. Fine-tune the delay times and sensor distances to ensure smooth operation in the maze. And there you have it. By following these steps you can build your own maze solver. Thanks for watching. For more information contact us today. We are on a mission to train over 10 million teachers in the field of STEM and practical learning by 2030. We have our connections in UAE, Nepal, Kuwait, Oman, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Our international offices exist at South Africa, Oman, UAE and Dubai. We have our head office at Mumbai, India.